six things you absolutely must do in Zendesk. Hey there, customer experience community. This is Dominic. Welcome to another video. Today, we're going to look at six things you absolutely must do in your Zendesk in order to be successful. Use macros whenever possible. As you might know or not, macros in Zendesk are templated replies. If you do something more than twice, create a macro for it. Macros are there to help you as an agent to be more productive. If you find yourself answering the same request with the same kind of answer or with the same kind of a modification of ticket properties, then create a macro for it. Make yourself more productive and get rid of the repetitive, boring stuff so you can focus on the more interesting stuff, which is not non-repetitive. Do an account health check every three to six months. An account health check is an audit of how you have your Zenas set up. Once you work in Zenas for a while, you start adding a bunch of business rules that sometimes become convoluted and cloggy and they slow you down. By doing an account health check, you make sure that your Xena setup is clean and is always up to date. Now you can look for the business rules that haven't been used in a while and if they haven't been used in the last say three months, then you can just delete them. What happens is if too many people have admin rights or too many people have been admins and maybe have left the team, they set up Zendesk to their best understanding and they keep adding up to the pile of business rules which eventually start to slow you down. If Zendesk is not clean, then it will make your agents have to find workarounds to solve tickets and you don't want that. You don't need that. You need a smooth running system them so that you can have the best results. Use SLAs. SLAs are service level agreements. Service level agreements are a commitment of yours to your customer, meaning that you take a responsibility to get back to them within X number of hours and to solve their request within, again, X number of days or X number of hours, depending on your niche. Now, service level agreements, if are being used correctly, then can prioritize your requests and make them move up top to the queue so your agents know what to work on in the order of the, of the priority that they have. As a best practice, I always give this advice, use the first reply time and the request or wait time. These are directly linked to your customer satisfaction. So if you get back to your customer within a timely manner as a first reply time, and then you solve the request within uh, expected times that you promise, customers will come back to you and will want to do business with you in the future. Collect feedback. Now, in my consultancy days, I've seen companies try to avoid collecting feedback from certain types of customers or from customers altogether. Why? Because they're afraid of what customers might say. <laughs> well, as counterintuitive as it may sound, those are direct feedbacks that you can better your product with. If you don't listen to your customers, if they don't feel heard, then they will probably switch you and go to a competitor very fast. Don't be afraid of negative feedback. Now, this obviously comes with a lot of accountability and responsibility, because if somebody gives you negative feedback, you actually have to go in and fix it. So keep your customer satisfaction open and collect feedback from anyone everywhere. I sometimes see this in larger organizations of 100 plus agents that uh, agents find different uh, workarounds to avoid actually collecting feedback, but that is detrimental to the bottom line because customers churn, they go away, and now you're left with a hole in your bottom line. So be honest with yourself and be honest with the organization that you have and with your customer, collect feedback. Create a notification for non-business hours. Now, this is one that you have to do in your Zendesk as a best practice. If you don't offer 24 seven support, then you have to have a notification letting your customers know that, hey, we're not able to take your call right now. We're not able to take your chat right now. We're not able to respond to your forum request or your email right now. What you can say is our office hours are within 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. or 7 a.m. till 5 a.m. Whatever it is, you have to be transparent and tell your customer exactly when you're available. This creates rapport and customers like that. This also sets the right expectations and your customers, even though they might be upset or they have something which is urgent, they will know that somebody will get back to them within a reasonable time. Instead of just sending a request and not knowing if anybody's actually going to get back to you, we've all been there, we don't like to be there. So yeah, let's let the customers know when we're available to talk to them. Have a knowledge base. Now, I've been banging this drum for a while now, actually, but I will keep repeating it until you actually do it right. So having a knowledge base or a frequently asked questions or however you want to call them, but you have to have answers to the questions that are most frequent in your customer service system. 80% of customer requests are always the same. So this is just an average based on all the niches. In some niches, that is even higher. In an ideal scenario, you resolve all your customer service requests 
with your product. However, there are some basic questions that are repetitive and you want to have an article written that answers that question. This is just customer facing. For agents internal use, you have to have a knowledge base on how to actually solve requests. In order to be productive, you write the internal knowledge base articles, you explain how to handle certain processes, and then when somebody joins the team, they can just read on how to handle processes by themselves and they can just ask questions. Now imagine you're a director of customer experience, head of customer experience, head of support, head of customer service, and if you don't have a knowledge base, then newcomers would always ask you questions. How do I do this? How do I do that? Which is boring and nobody wants to do that, so save yourself some time. I know it's a little bit more work to begin with, but it saves you a lot of time within a year, two, three, five years in the future. Now back to the customer's repetitive requests. If you have a knowledge base, it can be indexed by Google, they can search for whatever they're looking, they can find it on Google, read it themselves, so you encourage self-service. Self-service saves you money and time. Now on top of this, you can use an artificial intelligence to actually query that database, match it with some keywords that the customer is searching for, and then say, hey, here are some suggestions for articles that you can read and maybe can solve the request by yourself. You encourage self-service, you obviously save agent time, so you save company money, so you want a knowledge base. Get that in check. All right, this has been the update for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.